guys, it's Kevin again, and this is going to be my review for Arrow Season 2, Episode 22, Streets of Fire. And this was another fantastic episode of Arrow. You know, this was the last episode before the finale, and holy shit, it was really intense. It really was, because a lot went down on this episode. A lot of shit went down on this episode, especially towards that ending. I'm really looking forward to seeing how they end this season. But um, I really love this episode. A lot of surprises in this episode, I must say. It was a lot of stuff I was not expecting in this episode, and I thought that was really good the way they did that. I was not expecting a lot of stuff that happened in this episode, but uh, let's get to it, because I, I really enjoyed it. <sighs> so, it picks off more or less where the uh, the previous episode did. Basically, um, Oliver and Laurel, they're still in wreckage, and the result of Arrow bu building, blowing the ceiling around them to slow the progress of the uh, Mirror Crew soldiers... Oliver is trapped and disoriented, shouting for Laurel. Diggle is defending himself against Ravager. The pair trading quips. And Laurel is trapped inside of a collapsed tunnel. Oliver's bow and quiver are in there with her, though, and he plans to walk her through, blowing her out, her way out. And you know what? I really like the focus on um, Laurel and Sarah in this episode. They had a lot to do in this episode, which I was quite happy about. I like that we had a lot of focus on them, because they're definitely very interesting characters, and I like seeing a lot of them in this episode. So... Ravager is asking um, Diggle where Felicity is, saying she wants to kill her. Felicity pulls up in her van, runs over, and ra runs over Ravager. Diggle gets in, Ravager gets up, and so Felicity drives off. So at the police station, um, Laurel, La um, Qu Quentin is struggling with one of the uh, mirror crew. Laurel is struggling with uh, not Quentin, <laughs> Quentin. Um, Laurel is struggling with one of the. Um, Mirakura soldiers, who is trying to kill a bunch of officers. He sets off the grenades attached to the soldier, doing huge damage to the building while he hides on the other side of the room. So, Quentin, as we can see, is also definitely having trouble. Um, so that definitely is, a, you know, very big. Um, it's very, very intense in the beginning. This whole episode, very intense. A lot of... I, I loved about this episode. That was constant tension throughout the whole episode. At the mayor's office, we see Sebastian rejecting an offer of help from the governor, and then when Kate Spencer comes in to see him, he's calm and tells her that he has no concerns, that he knows the city will come the, uh, out the other side better, and um, Oliver talks Laurel through using the explosive arrow to free herself from the tunnel, which works, but she's very disoriented from the blast. He goes in, hugs her, then takes the bow and quivers. He calls out to Diggle, telling him that they're coming up, and then, um, basically, at the train station, one of the soldiers is chasing Thea. Yes, Thea is back. You know, we, we did get to see what happened to Thea, which I was, I, I was pretty sure we'd see Thea again. I didn't think she'd be gone for the rest of the season. But, um, Thea's back, and when the Dark Archer appears, shooting an explosive arrow at the soldier, he reveals himself to Thea, shocked that he is Malcolm Merlin. So, yes. Thea met Malcolm Merlin in this episode. I thought that was definitely very well done, and I really liked that in this episode. So, Laurel calls uh, her dad to tell him she's safe with the arrow, and her father tells her to get off the streets. Oliver finds Diggle and Felicity and briefly survey the chaos in the city before Felicity tells him that there may be a cure to all this, which we know that there is a cure. And, you know, Oliver built that cure, so there, you know, the Star Labs uh, cour courier, though, he had his truck thrown over a Mirakuru soldier, so it's still, it is stalled on the other side of town and too injured to move, so they're going to him, but Deathstroke, having bugged Felicity's phone, sends a soldier after him as well. So then they, they then leave Laurel to walk the police department. Felicity continues to monitor police vans while they're moving, but there are too many calls to be really be useful. Oliver says he hopes Laurel get, gets home. So, Laurel got home, I mean. Um, so, the police are strategizing. Um, Lance wants to call in the National Guard, but other cops say it's call for the mayor, and Quinn says the blood that, um, you know, Sebastian's on it, and the chief of police can make the call in an emergency, but apparently the chief of police is dead, um, which is pretty big. Um, Laurel then, um, I mean, Quentin, I keep saying Laurel, why do I keep saying Laurel? I mean, Quentin, oh my god. Quentin says there's only one other guy they can call and get a look. He tells Lieutenant that while he knows Arrow is breaking the law, he thinks he can help him reluctantly, the Lieutenant says, to make the call, which I, I did like. I like that now they're realizing that, you know what, 
Oliver's really, Arrow's actually, even though he's breaking the law, he really is useful to us. We're going to use him. And I thought that, I, I like that there. Um, he promotes, he then promotes, um, he then promotes Lance back to Detective, saying that because he knows more about what's going on than anybody else, he needs his help leading them. So I thought that was definitely really good. Now, Laurel did not get home, as we suspected. She's actually trapped by a mere crew soldier, but guess who saves her? Sarah saves her. Yes, Sarah is back, and I was very surprised we saw Sarah again, you know. I was surprised we saw Malcolm Merlin again, I was surprised we saw Thea again, and, and I was very, very surprised we saw Sarah again. And Sarah back gives us some of the best, um, most touching scenes in the whole episode. I loved all the Sarah Laurel scenes. Um, basically, she tells Sarah she knows who she is, and they hug. And then at the mayor's office, they're watching news reports when the power goes out. Blood looks concerned. A Miracruru soldier kicks someone through the door, then kills Kate Spencer in his office after Sebastian orders him to let her go, saying he doesn't take orders from Sebastian. I just thought that was a huge scene, and that was definitely just, that was just like, wow, she's dead. Um, so they're on the way to the cure, and Arrow gets a call from, um, from Quentin telling him that the cops are planning to work with him. He tells them to help contain the Miracruru army while they work on a plan. As they're heading toward the car, though, they're spotted by Deathstroke's army, who take their van while it's on its side. They're surrounded by uh, Miracruru soldiers. Now, when they had that van happen, I'm like, no, not another car crash, because we know what happened last time. Last time there was a car crash, what happened? Mora died, obviously. I didn't think that was going to happen again, but seriously, can we not have another car crash? Um, Oliver comes to first, but then he calls out, he then calls out to Diggle, and everyone's okay, but Felicity is unconscious. We knew she'd be okay, but they then start out the feed goal with Oliver holding up the rear to protect them from the Miracruru army. He, he fires explosive arrows into the vehicle while the soldiers are opening the trunk, which knocks them out, and, and the three get away. So near the train station, Thea is running away, looking very scared and confused, and Malcolm is following her calling out to her, telling her that he isn't there to hurt her. He basically just wants to reconnect with his daughter, and she doesn't believe him at first, asking him how he's even alive and why he's there, and he says that after he heard about Mora's death, he needed to see if she was okay. So, she rejects him, saying she wants nothing from him, but he tells her that right now she needs his help and his protection, and he offers to take her to safety. You know what? I thought, I, I actually really like Malcolm Merlin in the episode, because he wants to help Thea. He wants to be the one to save her. And, you know, I was thinking maybe he'd be the only one to save her because Oliver didn't save her. Um, who's going to save her? All she has left, she has Oliver. And now she has Malcolm Merlin. That's all she has left. And it's kind of sad. She's lost everything pretty much. And, you know, it definitely, I, I think that's a pretty big thing, definitely. Um, so at the Queen Consolidated office, Deathstroke and Ravager are looking out over the city Deathstroke says it's too bad Shadow isn't there to see it, and Ravager asks who Shadow is, and, you know, Sebastian interrupts before Slade can explain, complaining about the Miracruru soldier who attacked City Hall and, uh, killed Spencer. He says he never agreed to this. Slade tells him that he had a different plan, and when Sebastian says they had a deal, Slade confronts him, telling him that the innocent people, they need to die to uphold his promise to make Oliver suffer. Sebastian is repulsed when he realizes that it's all about that, but Slade isn't interested. He wants to raise the city all over love, so, you know... Sebastian, we saw, is actually a good guy in this episode, in this, which I was surprised about, because if you remember in the beginning of the scene, they made it look like Sebastian was going to be a very bad guy, but it turned out he was actually the good guy all along, so I thought that was definitely a good twist. I mean, not a twist, really. I mean, it wasn't too much of a twist. We pretty much figured he was a good guy, but I'm just saying I like that we did see that he was a genuinely good guy, and he really, want, he really just thought it was all about making the city better, when really it's about just taking down Oliver. So... Laurel finds a police officer dead on the hood of a cop car and runs to him. Sarah stops and sulks, and Laura asks her, um, Laurel asks her where she has been, and Sarah says it doesn't matter, and we get a very touching scene between Sarah and Laurel. Basically, it, it turns out that, you know, she tells Laurel that she isn't sure why she's come back, that Laurel doesn't know, and that Laurel doesn't know about her, who she's become. You know, the whole reason that Sarah left was because she'd become this killer, and she doesn't want to be that, and she knows... That's, that's who she is, and she tells Laurel she's the furthest thing from a hero, that she's been changed by her experiences, 
Laurel tells her that she hasn't been through what Sarah has, but she knows that she can overcome it. And she tells Sarah that they wouldn't know her by such a beautiful name as the Black Canary if she wasn't as re in re irredeemable as she thinks. So she kind of tried to show her, hey, you are likable. You know, you are a good person. You're not a terrible person like you think you are. And I thought that was definitely a great scene. So... Sarah and Laurel get a call from, um, get a call from Quentin, and Laurel tells him Sarah, and Laurel tells him that Sarah's back, and, uh, Oliver Felis, so, um, the Star Labs tech calls to the team, honks his horn to get their attention, but is attacked by a mere cruise soldier who takes the cure and delivers it to Slade. Oliver, Felicity, Diggle are at the clock tower where they learn there's no way to make more cures. Um, which is not a good thing, obviously, because the whole plan is for Oliver to give that cure to Slade, and they find out they can't make more cures, so they're kind of screwed. So Oliver says the foundry has been compri compri compromised and sends Diggle to get Roy. Oliver apologized to Felicity, and I just thought that was a great scene when they apologized. Honestly, I was feeling the illicity feels there. Um, I know they're not going to get Oliver and Felicity together yet, but I was feeling all illicity feels. I do want them to get together eventually. Um... And I thought that was definitely a good scene. I thought they were going to kiss in that scene. I really thought they were. Because, you know, it's the episode before the finale. Big things were going to happen. Um, I thought they were, that was going to happen, but that didn't happen. Um, so, under a bridge, while they're waiting, where they're waiting for um, land, Sarah hears a woman screaming and goes to help. Laurel follows and sees her run into a burning building, which explodes twice, and as Lance frantically radios for help, Sarah carries a child out of the building. Thea is still, and, in you know, meanwhile, while all this is happening, Thea is still rejecting Malcolm when they're attacked by another Mirror Crew soldier, and ultimately, Merlin takes him out, but falls in the process. So at the clock tower, Sebastian calls Oliver, telling him that he should have listened to him before, but that he has taken the Mirror Crew cure. So at the clock tower, Team Arrow mobilizes after they put Roy on a gurney, still on the pit Viper Venom drill, because, you know, Roy is not woken up yet, and I feel by the end of, you know, next week's episode, Roy's gonna wake up, and he's gonna be the one to take out Slade. I think that's what's gonna happen. Um, so Felicity asks if they're not sure it's, if they're sure it's not a trap, and they're not, but they go anyway. So Oliver goes to see Sebastian, who is explaining why he's Brother Blood, that he made the mask to conquer his fears because that's how he saw his abusive father. And I, I love this scene because finally we get to see why he was, you know, the way he was. And basically he says all he ever wanted to do was to help people. And you know what? I, I just, I really like that because I, as I said, in the beginning they made it look like Sebastian was going to be a very bad guy. And it turns out he's actually a good guy. So I thought that was definitely a good scene. And he ends up giving over the cure, saying that when it's all over, he will do everything in his power to rebuild Starling City. He tells Oliver that if he tells the world about Brother Blood, he'll reveal his identity as the Arrow. So, basically, he's gonna help him, but at the same time, you know, he is telling him that, hey, I don't want anyone to know I'm Brother Blood because all I want to do is help the city, and if you tell anyone, I will spoil your secret to the entire world. Um... But honestly, I don't think Oliver cares if anyone knows if he's the Arrow, because honestly, Arrow, uh, Oliver told almost everybody in the last episode, so I don't, I honestly don't think Oliver cares. Um, so Sarah gets a bunch of praise from a cop who doesn't know that she's the Black Canary, but says the Black Canary is the bravest person she's ever seen. So at the mayor's office, Ravager comes to see Blood, knowing that he's given the cure to Oliver. She calls Slade to report on what happened, and then kills Sebastian, who dies with the words, I love this city. I was so surprised that they killed Sebastian. I was so, I literally was just like, oh. Because Sebastian was a huge character, and then they just killed him. So, yeah. Basically, all that time, it's now, I think the reason they did that was because now Oliver has nobody. And, you know, he was going to give him the cure and everything. And now that he did that, you know, basically Slade thought, well, he's no use to, him, to, him, to me anymore. He's a good guy, so bye bye I think that's what um Slade was thinking. So, Team Arrow takes out the cure, decides to inject Roy with it after a bit of debate because they think that's the right thing to do. And Oliver sneaks into Ivo's office, gets... Uh, oh, that's about the... That's the subplot. I'll get to that. But... Lance is called aside. The army is arriving to restore order, but it seems like they're going to blow the bridges and tunnels to cut off um, the roots in. And... Sorry, I turned on my music by mistake. Sorry. Um, basically, um, the army is arriving to restore order, 
and um, and Lance's lieutenant doesn't believe it's really the army because the nearest base is too far away. And at the clock tower, Oliver apologizes, then prepares to inject Roy. Lance calls to their attention to the military's arrival, and uh, basically that's that's how it ends with there. But the very last scene, and I thought this last scene that this was just really big. Um, at um at Argus. At Argus, Oliver calls Amanda to ask what she's doing. She says she has to contain the Mira crew army by any means necessary. She plans to bomb the city into oblivion. He tells her that he has the cure and can't stop and can stop slaying his men, but she says she can't take the chance he'll fail. She gives him until dawn, then the city is a crater. So then Oliver injects Roy, who probably is gonna end up fighting Slade and take him down. So the very end of the episode though, we see Malcolm Merlin comes to you know, finally wakes up. And Thea's holding a gun on him. Basically, she's ready to pull a gun because I think she's just so, like, going crazy and everything that she doesn't know what else to do. Um, that's probably why she did it. So, he tells her that if she's going to use it, she'll want to click the safety off. She threatens to kill him, but he tells her that he knows what she's going through, that she's all he has left, and that she's lost everything, too. And as he's talking to her, she shoots him. So, he's dead. And uh, now Thea has no one. And Oliver is no one. That's how this episode ends, is that Oliver is going to... But my question is, is this whole thing with um, Slade going to work? I don't really know. Um, as far as the flashback goes, I thought the flashbacks in this episode, honestly... I, I They were... I mean, I thought they were kind of unnecessary. I really did. Um, I, because I just thought it was a little bit unnecessary. You know, it's all about... Still about them trying to get off the island, you know. We'll talk briefly about it. Let's talk a little bit about it. Why not? Because, I mean, we always do. I, I always talk about it. So, Sarah's gone. Oliver goes back into the submarine where Sonar begins to ping. And An An Anatoly tells him that the Amazon is moving. And Oliver tells him to get the sub close enough that he can swim to the freighter. And that if he and Sarah aren't back in the hour to sink it. So... Oliver ready, readies to board the Amazon and reiterates that Knife Z should sink the freighter if he's not back in an hour. Anatoly tells him that he has made a friend for life and that if he ever needs anything, he only has to ask. And I thought that was a that was a good scene. I like that definitely. Um, and Oliver comes and lets Sarah out of her cell. He tells her to go. That he's not going to let Slade go. That he needs to cure him. Sarah tells him she doesn't want him to die. He, but Oliver says he needs to at least try to save his friend. She refused to go without him. And uh, the very last scene we see... You know, the very last scene we see is that, you know, Oliver um, sneaks into Ivo's office, gets a bow and quiver. The attacking the floor starts looking for the cure. And Slay and the crew of the Amazon catch him and holding the cure. So, basically, next week it's going to be Oliver shooting him in the eye and we're going to see what happened from there. So, I think that definitely was very big. Uh, you know, we had to see that, basically. But this episode, as usual, again, was amazing. Couple things I do want to know, though. Um, how is this going to end? Do you think that Oliver will be able to kill Slade? Um, I honestly, I really don't know. Slade is, seems so unbeatable that literally anything could happen in this next episode. I don't know what's going to happen. Literally anything can happen. It's going to be really, it, it's definitely going to be really interesting for sure, definitely. Um, also, as far as the flashback goes, uh, also with Thea, what's going to happen with Thea, I don't really know. Um, it's, who's going to die? I feel like someone else is going to die. I think it's going to be Sarah. Sarah's probably going to die because they said, um, the one, because remember how Slade says one more person has to die? Yes, he did kill Sebastian, but Sebastian was not that close to Oliver. Sarah, however, is very close to Oliver, so I think she's probably going to die. Um, I think that's probably what's going to happen. I, I really don't know. Um, but let me know what you guys uh, think of this episode again. I cannot wait for the finale. I think the finale is going to be great. That's it for my review. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you guys in my next video, which will be my review for the Americans, um, for tonight's episode of the Americans, which. Uh, comes on pretty soon, so I'll see you guys for that review. Bye!